You been shot. Yes. You been shot. Yeah, fucking you. You been shot. You been shot. And I have too. That's crazy, yeah. <laughs> it's what we deal with. Shannon, I'm June Dog, 109th Street, West Side Lanes, man. Big Bosco, 11th Street. Baby Lee Bill, West Side Lanes, 11th Street. Sad Dog, Devil Lane Gangsters. For those that don't know, but that many people do know, this is the red room we in, right? Yeah, this is Can we just, let's talk a little about the red room and what this room means to y'all. <coughs> Ooh. We're gonna let the big homie speak on that. Well, <laughs> it's been around for, I say, mm, the early 70s, this room been around. And my boy's father was, you see all the pictures up here, was the light heavyweight champion of California during the, I wanna say the late, uh, I want to say the late '50s, early '60s. Monroe Ratliff. Okay. He was the, he was the boxer Monroe Ratliff, and those are all his, the pictures of him with Muhammad Ali and you know people that he sparred with, used to live with. He said he used to live with Muhammad Ali, so he built this. It used to be a garage. He built it into this to make it a, like a bar situation slash gambling shack. So it's just coincidental that the room that was built before even lanes existed is red. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was his father's favorite color, so that's how, mm -hmm. that's how that came about. When I, when I was a kid, we used, I used to come through here, his father used to have, you know, he had a, on the other side, he had a, a gambling table, which was an old poker table. And he used to play poker with the captain of uh, the police force and all these old type of people back then in the days. They used to gamble right here in the this, in this, in this same place. Uh, how old were you when you decided you want to be from Denver Lane, and what was the reason that you made that decision? Well, let me get to the point on me right here to get me up out the way. I really don't got too much to say, but I'm going to say this real quick and real fast. I'm a Figaro bread baby. Figaro bread baby. I didn't choose to become a uh, Denver Lane. It was automatic for me. Right. It was exciting, and then without, without bullshit, and a lot of people say this number. I hear a lot of niggas say this age, but like about like maybe 11 or 12. About 11, 12 years old, and I was full fledged. Yes, I was. And I, you know, with me, it's like it's just a kid. Like I walk out my front door, I'm, I'm looking at all the OGs doing OG shit. Niggas like Tom Malone, Evil <coughs> Al, and Rolo, Fuji, all these niggas. You know, I, I can go with Liz, all the niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I done seen shit niggas can't imagine, homie, you know, just sitting in my front yard as a kid. But at the same time, all my G's. And I'm gonna take you to school, put me in their cars, fly me to school, fly me to football right. practice, all that. Step up out of wanted me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Wanted me to, Step to do out. something special in life. But, but this is all I this all I know. You know what I'm saying? Here, I ain't never really had no other homeboys to go kick it with and no shit like that. After school, at the football practice, I'm right back in the hood. Right, he had me to he had me to be with. My nigga hell right here. He had me to be here with. You know what I mean? He had me to be with. That's my big homie right here. Still, I ain't playing though. Still. Big homie right here. I get a good view on them scars on them knuckles though. Sucking niggas out. Same way, nigga. <laughs> 25, 30 years, you know what I mean? G-Lin, you know, I mean, shit, I've been doing this shit for Lord knows when, you know what I mean? I mean, shit, back when the wind just started blowing, you know what I mean? And how old were you when you really fully got involved in becoming a gentleman? 14, 14. When you make that commitment, how do your parents feel, your mom or your dad or your grandmother, how do they feel when they find out, you know, you in the streets like that now? You they really, find out too late. Yeah, you really don't let them know what's going and, on. You and, try to keep it from them. And as long as, as you could. could. Nobody parents agrees and condone no one doing no gang banging or no violence and no bad acts. So right. to sum up the question, you said how did the parents take it and how did your family feel about when you came a part of the gang, but nobody parents, not yours, to his, <laughs> other camera Nobody man. enjoyed Nobody that. parents is going loud them and condone them to gang bang. Tell us about when you got shot, since you brought that up. Just, you know, tell us where you were at and what happened and was you slipping or was there nothing you could do, starting with, with you? It was in like 92. It was over there by, uh, you know where uh, M&M's was? It was the M&M's over there and shit on, on Crenshaw and like 108th over there in that area. <coughs> It was an M&M's, like a full food place right By the Brawley Hut? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, a pizza. No, it's a, it's, it's, Brawley it's, Hut is Brawley on Hut. Nah, it's, no. it's a Big John's Pizza right there now. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a fish place right right next to right there. And it's a uh, donut. Uh, yeah, I jumped up out the door. Yeah. As soon as I jumped out the car, I was like, them motherfuckers was following me or something. As soon as I jumped out the car, they started popping on me. You know what I mean? I fell. I'm on, on the ground and shit, cold and all kind of shit. People telling me to relax, all that old shit. 
You know what I'm talking about? I'm relaxing. I go to the hospital. You know, I got shot in the back. They hit me. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I really don't know who the fuck it was, neither. And you weren't even in your neighborhood? No. Nah. Mm -mm. But I was flamed up, though. You know, flamed up means a lot. I don't know if it means a lot right now, mm. but flamed back, back then, yeah. oh, you flamed up, you getting shot, yeah. or you getting shot at. You know what I mean? You know, all, I'm just gonna make a long story short. You know, uh, them niggas pulled in front of my car, bumper to bumper, leaned out the window with a with a chopper. Right. Uh, shit. But not only that, it was in two cars. Another nigga, <coughs> he hopped out the car. He was I on was the right. sidewalk with a nine. I was right there. I got hit with the chopper in the chest. <coughs> I got out of my car and ran. As I'm running, the nigga on the sidewalk, he hitting me. I've been hitting him. I'm shot in the back, too. So I go, I'm in the backyard. These niggas, I'm hearing, they still shooting. They, how much? Mm. They was trying, the nigga, I'm. Man, I was right there. Like, I heard our hey. big homie say he was right there. Hey, man. They was trying to get him, too, and he down the block doing some other shit. You know what I'm saying? But but anyway, you know, I'm, I'm a hit. I'm hit four times <coughs> with a K and a nine. You know, so I go to the hospital. This shit happened on a Saturday. I didn't wake up till Wednesday. I woke up. Uh, I seen one of the, as soon as I opened my eyes, I seen one of the homies, big homies. And I'm trying to talk. He telling me, man, just, just lay back, nigga. We took care of everything. We handled our business. You good. You know, everything straight. Don't, don't say nothing. So, man, it took me probably like about three months, <coughs> about three and a half months to get back right. I couldn't walk. <coughs> when I got hit, I was weighing like 190. I think I, I was in the hospital. I was 145 pounds. Mm. They had to give me seven units of blood. Uh, I had, to, I had to learn, like I said, I had to learn how to walk again. They I cut half of my lung off. Uh, come on, man. They, they <coughs> chopped me up real good, man. They chopped ooh, me up real good. Ooh, and, and, ooh, and, ooh. And, and what kills it, when I was in the ambulance and, and, and I couldn't breathe because I was hitting the lung, I think the nigga with that nine got me in the lung. And uh, I can't, I'm telling, I'm telling the ambulance, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And they trying to put that little shit on your face for the oxygen, but I'm not knowing because I got homeboys that just been shot in the leg and died. And I'm thinking, right. this nigga trying to kill me. To, and I'm like, man, don't put that shit. I can't breathe. What the fuck is you doing? Right? So that's all I like. But, but now I remember he was saying, ain't nothing else I can do. We're like, that's it. I can't. There's nothing right. else we can do. Right. I, right. I heard him say that shit. There's nothing else we can do. I woke up Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still here, man. I'm bigger and better than yes. ever. You feel me? It's all good. So hit, hitting 365 four times on the bench, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that, that was a uh, real close call for you. Oh, man, I, I just knew, but see, it was crazy because I accepted death at that time. I knew I was gone. Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.